Hi there, my name is Aaron Short. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm talking about some software. This is some software which is incredibly useful for musicians. It's called Band in a Box and it's been around for quite a while. You may have heard of it. I've only just started using it and want to talk about my experiences, but I'm very lucky to have Tobin Frank with me from PG Music who make the software and I'm going to ask him all about the company and why the software is so awesome. So Tobin, thank you for joining me. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. That's on awesome. And if you've heard the videos in the past that um, PG Music put on their YouTube channel, you will recognize Tobin's voice from the instructional videos. Is that correct? That yeah. is correct. I do all of the new features videos uh, every year for both Mac and Windows and um, and a bunch of the other tutorial videos as well. That's awesome. You sound very familiar to me already. So, so that's great. <laughs> so let's go straight into it. If you've got any questions as we go, please feel free to add them to the chat and I'll address them as we get to them. But first of all, can you tell us about yourself? Uh, what, where are you from originally and what first got you into music? Um, I grew up in uh, a suburb of Vancouver, BC, up in Canada. And um, I... Uh, my musical history is I, I took piano lessons. That was a typical suburban thing to do. Uh, and I went through the, you know, Royal Conservatory, did all the classical stuff. So that was my main background. But once I got to high school, I started playing in bands and um, I uh, started playing bass. And uh, so bass and keyboards are my main instruments. And... Um, yeah, and that's that's where I started. I, I did at one point uh, spend a couple of years at uh, music school as well uh, in North Vancouver, Capilano College. I, I did uh, two years of their jazz program. Uh, so, yeah. So, what kind of what kind of music do you like to play yourself? Uh, mostly pop rock type stuff. Uh, I was in a band called Spirit of the West uh, in Canada for. Uh, just about 30 years um, and did a lot of touring with them in Canada and overseas. Uh, so that's, and that was sort of like a Celtic rock kind of band. Uh, so, hmm. yeah. That's interesting. I might come back to this as we talk about the software. Um, I might link that, back, sure. link that back. But can you tell us about PG Music? Who are they? Who, who started the company and why did they create this software band in the box? What's the history of that? Well, PG stands for Peter Gannon, who is uh, the inventor of the program and still our, our, the, the uh, president of the company and pretty much the chief programmer. Uh, there are other programmers as well, but he's the, he's the main one. And um, he started the company, I think, also about 30 years ago, uh, more than 30 years ago, actually, now. And uh, he was a doctor at the time, but his family was very musical, and he was he's a great musician as well. Um, and uh, he wanted to have something that he could practice to. That was it. He just wanted to make something that he, he's a piano player and wanted to have just drums and bass uh, where, you know, any chord progression, he could put it in and he would just have drums and bass playing so he could practice along too. Similar, kind of like at that time, you could get those Abersold uh, records where it was um, musicians, a drummer and a bass player, and you could play along with those records uh, to play jazz standards and that kind of thing. But I think he wanted to be able to do, just pick whatever key he wanted, enter whatever chords he wanted. So yeah, he invented it at that time, and that was pretty much it. He just wanted it for himself. At the time, he didn't even really have, have any thoughts of uh, you know, making a business out of it or anything, so yeah. This is awesome because the guests I've had on so far, all of them so far, have made a product to address an issue they had. So, so Peter oh, Gannon cool. had a problem. He wanted a band to, to practice with. So he made software to practice with. And then he took it to market and developed it over 30 years. Did I hear that correctly? 30 years ago? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And that's, that's pretty... Uh pretty unique for a software company a music software company especially to be around that long and still you know creating new versions uh to this day and new content and everything so yeah it's it's uh, very very impressive that is really cool i didn't know it was that long this is something i'd heard about back in my uni that my university days so you know 18 yeah. years ago people would mention it and i kind of knew what it was but didn't really i went to a tommy emmanuel camp and peter was there and I don't, I don't oh, think okay. we can. I remember someone saying, that's the guy who made Band in the Box. And I just thought, oh, that's that software right. my friends talk about. But it's only been recently that I've started using it. And I'll give you my thoughts on it as we go. 
But how, how would sure. you, if there's anyone in the chat right now, and if, if you are in the chat, please let us know if you're if you're a band of the box user or if you use backing tracks of any kind, please let us know that information. But say there's someone in the chat right now who doesn't know what band of the box is. What's your elevator pitch to kind of explain what this software does and why it's beneficial to musicians? All right, well, the, the basic thing is that it creates backing tracks. Um, and, you know, people use backing tracks for songwriting, for practicing, for production. So, and the, but the great thing is you can just type in a chord progression right into Band in a Box. You pick a style like jazz swing or country rock or Afro-Cuban. Uh, and there are like literally thousands of styles to choose from in Band in a Box. You set the tempo, you set the key, you press play, and it, it generates all of these backing tracks. So you've got bass in there, you've got a drum part, you've got guitars, you've got keyboards, pianos. Uh, all playing your chord progression. So uh, people will use this to, as I said, to practice. That was what Peter intended it for in the first place. Like it's a great way to to, uh, to practice. If you're a jazz musician, you can practice 251 progressions or specific tunes from the real book. Uh, so that, um, or if you're a, a rock guitarist, you have a backing band to practice your licks. So that's one way. Another way people use it is um, as a uh, f as a songwriting tool. So if you're working on a song, you just type in the chords that you've got so far for your song. You can listen to see how it sounds being played by a full band. You can change the change the chords if you want to try different ideas. You can change the form if you want to have you know you had a verse and chorus and now you want two verses and choruses. Well, just copy and paste, and uh, and now you've got it the form the way you want it, you can hear it. Uh, and then the other thing, <clears throat> excuse me, the other thing is as a production tool, people will use it, um, will actually use it in recordings that, uh, that, they're, that are intended to, uh, you know, sell or, or make commercially available. Um, or even if they're, if they're planning on doing a recording, they might use Band in a Box to make a demo to try out a song before they can take it into a studio and have other musicians play it. That way they can let the musicians know, I want it to be something like, I want the guitar part to be something like this, but more specific to the song, but something like that. So lots of lots and lots of different applications for how to use Band in a Box. I think one question a lot of people would ask you is, um, how good does it sound? Like, how good are those sounds? Are they MIDI? Are they are they audio? What, what, how do you make the sounds that accompany the musician in the in the software? Well, that's um, that's a really good question. And as of about 10 years ago, uh, it all of a sudden started sounding better because when Peter invented it, um, you know, way back when, uh, it was all just MIDI generated. So it sounded as good as your MIDI synth. But even then, MIDI generally doesn't isn't great because it's just individually sampled notes being played one after the other. You can get it to sound really good and some instruments are better than others but about well, at, over 10 years ago now um, we first introduced what we we call real drums so this is it's kind of like drum loops now so you're actually hearing performances by a real drummer but it's better than drum loops as well because it's not just a single bar being repeated over you're, you're hearing performances it follows the um, the outline and the form of your song that you've entered in Band in a Box. So that, so that was real drums that we introduced, and then all of a sudden it just sounded way better. You're now hearing a real drummer playing uh, in your Band in a Box song. And then within a couple years after that, we, we introduced what we call real tracks, which are all other instruments. So you are now hearing um, like real performances. So we make these real tracks with top studio musicians, and we're actually recording the audio from, you know, uh, we record their amps. So you're getting, you're hearing the amp tone uh, and it's, um, and it's, and it's not individually sampled notes. You're hearing, it is pieced together, but it's done in a way that you're, you're hearing it's, it, it, it sounds like a, an actual performer right in front of you recording there. This, this is the reason that I got the software. I, I, when I heard you were now using real audio, then I thought, oh, now I have, I can have a band because I, I do solo gigs. I'm thinking now I can have a band in my studio very easily. I can type the chords in. Yeah. I guess all you need to know is a bit about theory, right? So if you know in C, you can play C 
E minor F, you type the chords in, you select the tempo, you select the style, and you get an instant backing band. Yeah, that that's right. And uh, yeah, that was a, another thing I forgot to mention when I was talking about all the different uses for Band in the Box. Live performance is one that many people use it for as well. And to address your point about you need to know a little bit of musical theory, not much, uh, really. Uh, you can use Band in a Box even if you're very limited and you don't even know the names of the chords. There's tools within Band in a Box that, for example, when you're when you're in the chord chart, you can open something called the Chord Builder, and then you click on the different chords that are common for the key that your song is in right now, and hear what they sound like. So you just click on the different chords until you you're like like if you don't know what they're called. You're clicking on them, and it's like, oh, that's the sound I wanted. That's that's the the chord movement that I wanted for this bar, and then I move on to the next bar, kind of thing. So, it really is. Uh, it's very useful regardless of your um, theory knowledge uh, or even your musical skill. Like beginners can use it, or really advanced uh, musicians can use Actually, it. I didn't know that feature was in there. So I've I've been using my theory knowledge to input chords. And then select uh, arrangements. Another fear I had was how many, um, you know, how many styles are there? But there's a lot of styles, right? There's a lot of stuff in there. They're... Yeah, um, like there are over off the top of my head. There's over six thousand at least, maybe even over seven thousand wow. styles. Now, when I say a style, I mean uh, a particular like we like we have jazz swing styles, for example. But we have even like hundreds and hundreds of those. We have ones that would be just a jazz trio. We have, th that would be one style. We have, and that might be a piano trio. We then might have a guitar trio. So a guitar, a drummer, a bass player. We then might have a, a guitar trio with a sax soloist. And there's, you can have actually with the real tracks, you can have solos generated over these parts too. Again, real musicians. So, so that's what I mean when I say thousands, we have literally thousands of all of these different you know styles within genres basically do you have a studio where you record these tracks or do you record them all over the world in different studios a lot of the stuff we record is in nashville nashville is such a a, a great place for there being just tons of excellent musicians and we have a producer that we work with in nashville who records a lot of musicians there uh we do some up here in canada uh, we're located in victoria british columbia and so uh, we do, we record a lot of Canadian musicians up here. Um, and we don't have our own studio where we do it, but we've, we've got a collection of studios that we work with. Uh, you know, we'll just rent, rent time in them when we want to, uh, when we want to um, record real tracks That's artists. Because awesome. I think you have some famous artists on those too, right? Like well-known people. We do, yeah. Um, our, the producer in Nashville, uh, Mike, uh, sometimes also will will travel to new york and record some musicians there so for example um we we had a bunch of real tracks that we called our poll winner real tracks so these these were musicians that had won uh that like the downbeat um uh readers poll uh critics poll and and other similar type things so for example ron carter on bass we recorded him several years ago so now in band in a box you can and you can uh pick a style that will have ron carter playing bass uh a, a real track style that we made with him kenny Barron on piano um phil woods uh, before he passed away we were it, we recorded him and uh, those are wonderful wonderful real tracks as well we also in nashville like i said we have uh, musicians there that uh, uh that we work with that are fantastic like brent mason um He's sort of a musician's musicians, musicians musician. If you if you are a player, you might know his name. If you're not, you've probably heard him. He's I think the most recorded guitarist of all time ever. He's played on on thousands of country records uh, over the years. So that, that um, yeah, um, Alex Acuna is another. I, I actually got to go down to L.A. and record. Uh, drummer Alex Acuna. Uh, that was really that was really mm. cool, uh, and those are some great real tracks as well. With the real tracks, are you able to change the tempo and the key, like you can with MIDI? You, yes, yeah, you can, because um, you can enter any any chord progression in any key uh, in Band in the Box, of course, as I said, and um, it's not just 
it's not if you if you change the key it's not going to just take what was there already and and pitch shift it like up five semitones it's going to regenerate the part but you've now transposed it so it's in the new mm -hmm. key so it's it's new material basically uh so it's, it's not like uh you're getting a guitar player to play in the key of e and then you're and then you're pitch shifting it up uh to a you are you are if if you change the key it's like you're you're putting a new chart in front of the oh. musician and saying oh play it in this key I didn't instead know that. Kind of i thought you were pitch shifting it up yeah there is some of that that goes on uh, because we don't um, we don't necessarily record all of the chords, you know, possible chords and possible progressions in all of the keys. But we do it uh, staggered so that um, when Band in a Box does need to pitch shift to get some material that it wouldn't otherwise have, it never has to go more than like a semitone right. up or right. a semitone so down. Really, yeah, because if you if you pitch shift too much, it can start to sound uh, weird, can't it? Yeah, that's yeah. great. I didn't know that. That's really sure. interesting. Yeah. We've got a lot of users yeah. in the chat. I want to go and say hi to them. Um, hi, sure. Patsy Smith. Hi, Alec Bourne. Um, hi, Defcon Clark from Tennessee. He saw you at NAMM. I was, were you at NAMM? I was, I was there oh, cool. too. Yeah, um, yeah. Tuscany here, South Carolina. Great. Deb Murphy uses Band in the Box. We got uh, user since 2013. Um, Alec has never tried it, but wants to try it. You should do, Alec. I love it. Defcon Clark says, yes, I love the software. I use it for backing tracks and song production. Uh, um, Great, yeah. My ver someone says, my version has 7,422 styles of 2,912 oh, real instruments of more than 3,100 hours of studio quality recorded audio by 145 top quality studio musicians. I guess that they must work for the company. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> now, Deb said something interesting. I started with Band in the Box because my timing was terrible. And this is something I've noticed too, because you make a backing track, which is in time, you can play to it. It's like practicing to a metronome, right? It's really useful. Yeah. Um, she said her instructor yeah. suggested it because there was no way anyone would want to play along with me. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, yeah, you basically get your own personalized, perfectly timed band to practice with. It's much yeah. more fun than a metronome. Yeah. Um, and you can practice different keys, different styles, you can record it, you can listen back. It really is amazing. Well, that comment actually made me think of something something else. There's a feature that, um, like one thing, just as a musician in general, you know, long before I, I even heard of Band in a Box, of course, all musicians would practice something really slow until they really get it under their fingers and they would gradually bring the speed up. Like that's a time-tested method of, of practicing. And there's a feature in Band in a Box where you can have it loop a certain section and start off slow and then it automatically as it's looping just gradually increases the speed i did not know that uh, i did so, not know that's awesome yeah. Yeah. that's in there yeah. wow so yeah there's it's um it's it is definitely there are lots of tools that make it a really good practice uh practicing tool that's amazing. yeah i didn't even know about that feature yeah. <laughs> Like I said, I just got it kind of recently. I got the 2019 version. The 2020 version has actually just arrived at my door today. No kidding. I'm um, oh, looking great. forward to trying yeah. that out. Um, one more thing, though. David said he has the original trio pedal from Digitech, which is he thinks is based. Is, is Band in the Box technology in the trio by Digitech? Or is that just a... It is? Yes. Yeah, they, they actually did work mm. with us. So it's... Um, it uses some of the the MIDI styles that we had in Band in the Box. It used um, uh, some of the patterns from those. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's uh, a lot of people have, and I think it even says on the on the pedal. It even says "powered by Band right. in the Box" or something right. like that. I didn't... I'm, I, that's just off the top of my head, but uh, but yeah, it. Uh, it One of my questions that. was going to be: Could you use it live? Like, could you put a verse on a pet on a button on a pedal and hit that, and then hit another one? Like, could you make like a live version? I guess the trio is kind of like that in a way. Yeah, um, the trio is would doesn't have any of the real tracks uh, or anything in it, so you would be dealing with MIDI. But again, not it's not that's not necessarily a bad mm. thing. Um, but um, but using Band in a Box live. You can, you can, there's a thing called the conductor feature in Band in a Box that lets you kind of jump between different sections of this, of your song, um, in real time as it's playing. And I think you can set up pedals to like, you you would be using a QWERTY keyboard to do that, but I think you can, you can get pedals that you can set up to, 
basically emulate what a QWERTY keyboard, certain keys. And so you can you could use a pedal theoretically to to do that. Now, lots of people use Band in the Box for live situations just as backing tracks where they just start the song, they play along with Band in the Box until the song finishes. So that, of course, is, is super easy to do. Uh, and you just you can bring your laptop on a gig and do that kind of mm. thing. But with the conductor thing, if you're a solo, if you're if, for example, you're doing a guitar solo and you want it to go an extra chorus, you could use the conductor to loop back kind of on the fly. Oh, I, I, I want to do an extra an extra solo. So I'm just going to going to loop it on the fly that's, there. That's really great. So. We've got um, Alec in here actually runs a MIDI group on Facebook. They talk about MIDI devices all day long and how they can use it to oh, cool. enhance stuff. So I'm sure he's already thinking, how can I link up a MIDI pedal to the computer? to control those and trigger those things. So this brings me on to my next point, yeah. actually. Um, I wanna know what you, th what you think about this. I love the software because it is so involved, as you say, but you don't have to use all those features. You can literally just put some chords in, choose a style, and you have instant music, right? It's really great. But yeah. I, I felt when I first loaded it up, it could look a bit daunting to people. What, what would you advise to someone who's not really used to software and, and buys this product? What would your advice be on how to learn how to use it? In the, in, the, in the beginning stages? What I would suggest is to go to the, the PG Music forums um, and just and, and post some questions there uh, if you have any questions about it. Because uh, there are lots of people on the forum that have been using Bannerbox for years and years and they really, they love to help new, new users out. Uh, it's a very welcoming forum. Uh, so that, was, that would be one suggestion I would have. Uh, the other is to go to our website and, ch and check out the tutorial videos. Like, there's lots of beginner uh, tutorial videos there. There's also a new feature that was added called the Feature Browser that it lets you open a single dialog, and then you can just search. Like, if you search by guitar, it sh uh, shows you a list of items that all have to do with guitar. So, for example, if you, were, if you started using the program and were like, I really want to see guitar chord diagrams, um, uh, but they're not showing here. You go in the feature browser and just type in guitar chord diagrams and uh, then it would show up. And uh, yeah. That's awesome. Like I said, so those, it, it's, a, it's a plus because there's a lot of stuff in there. But I think, I think yeah. if someone gets it new, they should definitely watch your videos because you've got loads of content on how to use it. There's a Facebook group yeah. as well, um, which I'm in. Yeah. And there's yeah. the forums. So, and I think, I think I would say just start slow, just start with a basic song, and then you know, learn stuff as you go. That's, that's what I've been doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, I love it. It's changed things for me because I, again, I'm a solo musician. I do YouTube. I sometimes need backing tracks or I want to write a song. And now I've got access to a band, basically. It's, and yeah. I'm, I'm just yeah. scratching the surface and it's already changed how I make music, which is, I, I, I love it. I really love it. And, and I, I bought it before. I start talking to you guys. I, I bought it as a customer and it just opened up so many new avenues. That's why I love it. So I'll definitely do some videos on it on my channel as well. So please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, but definitely check out the official videos. They're really, they're really great. And you'll hear Tobin's voice as well, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so another thing, when I was first um, looking to buy the software, I was a little bit overwhelmed with how many versions there are to buy. So I actually ended up getting the full version on the, on the, on the solid state drive. So you just plug it in, it's got all the files in, in full quality, but there's quite a few different versions. So have you got any advice on, if someone's watching this and they wanna buy the software, which version would you suggest? And is it available on Mac and PC? Uh, yeah, so yes, uh, it's available on Mac and PC. <clears throat> uh, and um, we do have uh, uh, um, mobile versions, uh, but you kind of, you have to use them in conjunction with uh, with the Mac or PC version. So, but the main program itself is Mac or PC. Um, and my suggestion actually is if you're, if you are unsure, um, the, the basic version is the pro is called the pro version. That's the cheapest one. Um, and you can get that one. And then if you decide later on that you want all the extra styles and everything, you can upgrade and you haven't, if you've done it that way, you haven't paid more than if you had just bought the, the full ultra pack to start with. I, I should mention that sort of the difference between the packs, the program itself is exactly the same no matter what version you get. 
the main difference is, is just how much content you get. So when I said earlier, like there are 7,000 styles and each of those styles is comprised of a bunch of real tracks and real drums, it's the number of real tracks and real drums that you get and the number of, of styles that, uh, that put those all together. That, so that, that's the difference between the basic one, the pro version, and uh, the ultra pack has all of the real tracks all of the real drums um and uh yeah if I, if anyone's so, unsure is there a demo version i can't remember there is not a demo version uh but another thing i should mention though is that we do offer a 30-day money-back guarantee so if you did purchase for example the pro version which i believe is 129 dollars uh have to go to the website for that but uh to to see if but i'm pretty sure that's what it is but if you bought that and you were not you know you, you just it wasn't what you thought it was um you could return it uh, for a full refund so I'll, I'll tell you my story in case it helps people watching so i i bought the not not the pro but the next one up whatever that is and i liked it so much that i then returned that and got the one on the hard drive with everything full quality all the stuff on there because that's how much i liked it yeah yeah i, I just i saw yeah. so much oh, i great. saw so much use in it that i didn't want to like go to a style and it's not there i want i just want to have everything at my fingertips so um yeah you know, i'm, I'm I, I can fully endorse it i love the software i'm using it all the time now it's just amazing and another thing that you've added which i think is incredible is the door plugin so can you tell us about that because i think that's a game changer yeah, uh, it, it is. And a lot of people really love that that feature. Um, what that is, is when you install a program uh, on your computer, Mac or Windows, um, it also installs uh, a plugin, uh, VST or uh, um, specific Pro Tools plugin, like that all, all options get uh, installed. And that means when you're using a DAW like Pro Tools or Logic or Reaper or GarageBand, you can open up uh, a version of Band in a Box right within the program itself. So you can then add your chord progression right in a, a plugin inside of inside that DAW and create the tracks there and play them right within the like you can you can then play a play a project in GarageBand and have it be have it playing through the through the plugin or you can drag the tracks from the plugin right into Logic or Reaper or whatever, so that's that has been very popular. A lot of people are using that. Um, technically, you could do all that kind of stuff before we added the plugin. You you but you would have to just open up the Band in a Box application as well as Pro Tools or whatever, and you could still drag the tracks from Band in a Box into Pro Tools or any of these other DAWs. But um, but despite the fact that you could do that previously, people love to work in the the DAW that they're comfortable with and they don't and they they don't want to have to open up a whole other application and I totally understand that and uh, and this is for them uh, and people are really really loving it I, I love it I, I use logic so I open it up in logic and I actually yeah. just did a uh, another youtuber did a, a rearrangement assignment so I actually set the tempo, set the chords in that I wanted, and just dragged the files in, and then it, and looped them in Logic, applied EQ oh, yeah, effects yeah. in Logic. I even yeah. replaced his drums with with the PG drum, you know, the band the box drums, and then I and I redone everything. So then I redid the vocal as well. So it really, yeah. it's it's it, that that feature for me is absolutely incredible. Well, one thing I've it's a workflow thing. Uh, yeah, definitely. It's that's and that's so important. Workflow having a smooth workflow is so important in in producing music and making music yeah. so yeah yeah i agree and and just to how fast it is to try things and replace them and then you can go to the software and you can loop you know the logic you can then loop it and move it around and it's just so so creative it just frees you up to create music which is really important yeah yeah one, one thing i did forget to ask you earlier what are the what are the hardware requirements to run this is it very processor intensive to run all these real tracks and things um not really, actually. Uh, you can run, I mean, I believe people are still using the uh, recent versions on like Windows XP. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it certainly helps to have a, to have a fast processor, but you don't need a, a, a you know, kick-ass computer to, mm. to run down in a box by, by any means. You can use an older one. The one thing with Macs um, is, 
now this isn't just a, just uh, um, a PG Music or Band in a Box thing, but of course w- w- uh, Mac went to only 64-bit uh, mm. applications, and that affected a lot of applications, um, not just Band in a Box. Any 32-bit ones would no longer work as of as of uh, Catalina. So um, and that was last year. So at, at, at that point, uh, you know, we made a 64-bit version of Band in a Box, and that's what you get uh, what you get with it now. So that's, so if you have if you have Catalina, you need to have a, a relatively newer version of Band in a Box. But apart from that, um, yeah, the processor doesn't need to be that not, doesn't need to be that uh, uh, that fast. That's really cool. Um, it seems to me like you update it every year as well. So are, are those updates um, essential? Are they optional? And and uh, for an example, like what have you added in the the version that just came out, the twenty twenty version? What's the what's the main features of that? Um, well, we always add uh, lots and lots of new content. We're continuously recording musicians. So that's uh, that's the big thing. Um, uh, we always, uh, or we try to, over the past few years, we've been trying to, to add 202 new real tracks uh, for, for, for each uh, upgrade. So that's when I say a real track, of course, I mean, like one real track would be uh, jazz swing, um, acoustic bass, that would be one. Um, by with you know that we made with a particular musician um so yeah 202 of those other lots of other new content as well some of the other new features i I mentioned the feature browser that's one that that a lot of people really like because it makes you uh for people especially for beginners it really helps people understand the the program there are also um uh additions to the um uh to things like the song picker, just making it easier to sort through your collection of songs. Lots of people have have song collections, band in a box song collections that you know are in the thousands of songs, and uh, it, it, we, this is now a way to organize them better and to to keep on top of that. So, and of course, you mentioned that the DAW plugin. We're also as whenever we have come up with a new version of band in a box, we're also improving the plugin as well i'm actually just going to so show I, i'm just going to show on the screen the actual main screen i'm going to sh- i'm going to show the main screen of band in the box so people can see it sure so they can see there's the mixer on the top right where you can set your levels the main screen where you input your chords um and then the top left is where you select you pick your song basically and then all the other options as well and i'm going to show them the plugin because that looks awesome so that's the plugin. It's like a mini version of the main screen, basically, isn't it? But it, you, you'll see that in your door, so it's, you can use it. Yeah, that's with right. It. Uh, one question I've yeah. got: Can you, if you have a real track, can you have like the bass line from another real track? Can you combine them like that? Can you choose an alternative like drum part, or do you have to use the one? Oh yeah, yeah. You can. Yeah, and that's a that is a great thing with uh, with Band in a Box. You can mix and match. Uh, there are the, the styles that you that you you load in from the style picker. Those are, that. Um, they're like uh, bands, ensembles. So those styles will load a particular bass, a particular drum, a particular guitar, etc. But you can change any of those uh, at any time individually. So you could, if if you had a, an, you know, an Afro-Cuban trez, for example, that you wanted to add to, a, a, you know, a country style, uh, you could do that for sure. Um, and what are the main new additions in the 2020 version that you've you got there? Um, the main new additions, uh, as far as as far as content, um, we've added. Um, what did we add? Uh, lot. Uh, we added a bunch of sort of uh, classic guitar styles. So um, uh, now these would be soloists and and rhythm guitars that would be like emulating particular guitarists. So we have ones that are uh, kind of in the style of Clapton or kind of in the style of David Gilmore uh, from Pink Floyd. Um, you know, we're not, we're not trying to emulate particular songs, but you can, you can have, if you wanted to have a guitar solo that kind of sounded like David Gilmore, we have a bunch of real tracks like that. Um, another big thing we added now we've always had lots of uh, jazz styles, jazz swing styles, but we put together a couple of sets of um, of real tracks that are specifically for 
uh, specifically made to, to work really well for rhythm changes. So if you're a jazz musician, you'll know that um, rhythm changes is one of the most important uh, progressions uh, to kind of get under your belt. Um, and those th th those chord changes have been used for like literally hundreds and hundreds of of jazz tune jazz songs. So um, we've put together a set of real tracks that um, they can play over any just like any real track. They can play over any chord progression that you enter in, but they work really really well if you put in rhythm changes. We have another similar one for jazz blues. Jazz blues is is an incredibly important and common progression. Uh, so, so these are kind of geared towards jazz students, uh, that mm. they're, they're great for, for them to learn. I can imagine jazz that players actually brings love me this. To... Sorry. I can imagine jazz players love this software, but so, so, I mean, I don't play much jazz. I still love it too, but for improvisation, yeah, yeah. incredible. Yeah. 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 Um, that actually make, uh, reminds me too of something that for, for students now, even though these are real tracks, they're, they're real musicians playing real instruments. Um, most of what we have there is also transcribed. So, uh, so you'll hear a real saxophone player, but you'll be able to see the notes that the sax player is playing on screen in notation. Wow. Wow. So that makes it a, a great learning tool as well. Mm -hmm. Some people will look at that and they'll say, oh, it's, it's, I see the notes there, so that means it's MIDI. That's not actually the case. They're just sort of simultaneously displaying the the notes while you're hearing the actual performance. So has someone actually gone in and transcribed that themselves, or is that a computer working? Yeah, on yeah, and that's part of what our development team uh, does is is transcribing a lot of this stuff. Now it's not transcribed from scratch usually, usually uh, because that's uh, you know that's a very, a very time consuming thing. Mm -hmm. But we'll use software to kind of give us an automatic, like there's software that, that uh, will, will give you transcriptions, automatic transcriptions of audio. Uh, and it, it does a pretty good job, but you then have to go in and sort of clean it up and make it look, look good for notation. So that's, that's kind of part of the process of, of our development. I, I, just got, I just got Melodyne. I was thinking I could load up the, your tracks in Logic and then use Melodyne to change the melody myself. It's, it, the, the world is your oyster with this stuff now. The software is making it so much easier to, to yeah. write and create music. I absolutely love it. You know, it's amazing. Yeah. Someone and said, that's a good point there too, is, is using Band in a Box in conjunction with, with a lot of other great okay. software that's out there. That's, that's a, a really good thing. And I guess that's why the DAW plugin is right. so popular too, is right. because you're using Band in a Box yeah. uh, really hand in hand with Pro Tools or Logic or whatever. Someone said layering vocals is a new feature this year. I'm not sure what they mean by that. Layering vocals. Uh, yes, that, uh, the, it's what we call the thickening feature. And what that, and it's not just vocals, it can be used on, on any instrument, but it works really well for vocals. Uh, and strings and horn sections. And what it is, is you can take a, a real track style uh, uh, and you can have it generate the same real track, uh, multiple instances of the same real track, but picking different material. Um, so, uh, so say over the chord progression like C, F, and G, it'll be put together the parts, but they'll be take, drawing from different parts of the the original source and the the point for that is that it just gives it a nice full sound it sounds a lot more full than having so we have like for example a vocal reel tracks styles that have you know it's a three-part vocal arrangement but you're now getting you're layering it so you're hearing many many more voices all playing uh, so yeah it's kind of like it, it's sort of similar to the kind of wall of sound production mm. technique where you know you would you would record uh, multiple layers of the same of the same instrument or the same person uh, to get that thick sound. I was going to say, can you tell us about anything that's planned for the future? And that kind of time, I was about to make a comment of: Is there anything this software doesn't do? Because um, it does so much under the hood. I'm not just praising you. I mean, very clear to me now. It does so much stuff. Um, so is, is, is there anything you, you can talk about that's on your roadmap going forward? Is there anything that this software doesn't do that you would like it to be able to do? Um, that's a good question. Um, 
Well, you mentioned the Melodyne thing and changing individual notes. That's That could potentially be something that could be done right within Band in the Box mm-hmm. rather than happen to use it in a, with another thing. Uh, this is not something that's per- that's specifically in development. This That's mm-hmm. just something that was off the top of my head uh, based on what you were talking about earlier. Um, my sort of, my main job within the company is dealing with the content. Um, I do make suggestions and stuff for, for new features, but, uh, throughout the year I'm, I'm mostly preparing the, the new material, like the actual musical content that comes in. So that's what I'm mostly focused uh, on. And on that front, um, I always like to add new instruments that we haven't used before. Uh, and I think a lot of people really like to see new instruments come in. Yeah. Uh, for, uh, for example, with the last one, we had um, uh, mandola, uh, which is um, like a mandolin, but it's uh, it kind of like it's like you have a violin and a viola. Well, in the mandolin family, you have a mandolin and a mandola, so it's lower like that. So we've added uh, uh, some styles with mm-hmm. that. We added five string fiddle, which we'd never had before. Um, we added some jaw harp wow. styles, <laughs> which which were kind of are kind of cool. It gives you a, a neat sort of bluegrassy kind of thing. Um, so that's that's what I'd be focused on mm. uh, for the for for the future is think of, uh, trying to think of what kinds of instruments we haven't had and, and ukulele, um, ukulele and, see what and bagpipes. Oh, we've got lots of ukulele. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I, I was thinking it'd be cool if you could yeah. type in the lyrics and it write and it sings the words and writes a melody for you as well. But there might be a way up. <laughs> oh, that's already no, in there. I didn't that's know already that. in there. Wow. Yep. Um, so you can well you can enter lyrics um, and then it will display them. So you could you can kind of use it as a as a basically as a karaoke mm. machine. Um, but there's also a feature in Band in a Box that if you've if you've added lyrics in. Um, it will do like a like a vocal a vocalizer thing, and will actually sing th- wow. the lyrics that you you put that. in. <laughs> now it's it's pretty cheese yeah. ball. But it might but, give you it might, uh, but it it's might there. inspire that's, that's you. Future. It might give you ideas, which is what it's all about, right? Maybe. Um, maybe I yeah. did notice you've got like certainly you could use it to try out harmonies, mm. maybe like uh, uh, trying out different harmonies. That's a that's a and the cool harmonies thing. sound good because so. they're like oohs and ahs. But you do have a soloist feature, right? So you can write a chord progression and have like a lead guitar. So you could actually make an instrumental album from scratch with just this software, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can. And lots of people have done have done something similar to that, uh, if not that that very thing itself. Um, but using it, using it for like backing tracks for like a slideshow or, or that kind of thing. Like it's great for that kind of thing as well. A question. And there is a, there's a feature called the melodist that actually will generate a song with a melody for you. Mm. Um, and like the real tracks, it's kind of different every time you use it. So you can use the melodist feature in band in a box to create a song just like that. And, um, and then do whatever you want with it. It's it's at that point, it's your song. Well, I was going to say, musicians are going to say, okay, I can make a whole song, whole album in this software. Can I can I release it? Yes, uh, yeah, and you can if if the if the chord progression is yours uh, that that you've created yourself, um, or <laughs> using the melodist, as I said, the tracks themselves are entirely <laughs> excuse me, entirely royalty free. So yeah, you can release all of this material without uh, there's no, there's no royalties to pay. If you've bought the program, you're you're welcome mm, to do that. I think that's huge. That's yeah. really huge to, uh, to do that. Yeah, yeah. That's, so yeah, I mean, I love it, and you've you've kind of told me me about a bunch of features I didn't even know about. So um, I think we could sit we could sit here and right. talk about it all day. If we haven't, I'll ask for so many final questions about the good crowd here tonight. I've actually, got a lot of users that are already using the software if you've got any final any final great. questions for us please ask us right now because i feel like it's such a great program it sounds so good there's so many features the best thing anyone can do is just to buy it and use it and i think they're going to like it I, there's nothing about it that i don't think people won't there's, you know, unless there's some one instrument they want that's not there or you know that, it, that you can't well this is but this is the great thing if there is an instrument that they want that's not there they can go on our forums and there's uh, specific sub forums for requests. Mm. 
so they could request certain styles or certain instruments um, right there. And who knows, we might add them in the future. Yeah, I do like that you're releasing updates all the time. And you, you know, this software has been around for yeah. so long and, and supported. And I love that Peter's still working there too. You know, that's really cool. That it's still like a, how, how many employees are actually at the company right now? Um, I don't know uh, off the top of my head. I'd say probably about 30 total. Mm. I could be wrong, give or take. No, that's awesome. Well, I'm going to start winding up. So I want to say thank you to everyone that joined us. We had a really good crowd. Great questions. Lots of fans of software already. Um, and again, I, lo I use it. I love it. I'm looking forward to checking out 2020 version. Please subscribe to my channel. I have some videos. I hope to make some tutorials myself, but I always post stuff that, where I've used the software so you can hear it for yourselves on my channel. Um, I'd like to thank you, Tobin, for your time today. Um, I've learned a lot and I hope you've enjoyed it too. Yeah, I have. Uh, thanks very much for having it's me great. on here. It's been great to put a face to the company as well and also to the tutorial videos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> so thank you very much. So stick around. I'll say goodbye to you off the air. To everyone watching, thank you for joining us. I'll put a link to the software in the description here as well so you can go and find out more about it. Let me know if you've got any questions. I love it. I recommend it. And thank you for joining us. Be well, and I'll see you next time. Oh, wait, one second. Just had something come through. Uh, in the Mac version, when you put in chord hold does it still play it at full value does that make sense to you play it at full value i'm not entirely sure maybe full volume maybe? um like when it holds full volume. Hold the chord, it right? should yeah it should it should be it should play it kind of at the same level as the as as the rest of what you've been playing now that this is actually that's a good point if it's not um, again, our forum is a good place to uh, report bugs, like because that could potentially be a bug mm -hmm. in a particular style that this that that the posted that might might be having. Uh, in which case, yeah, you can report those kinds of things, and and um, uh, we usually get to those those types of things. Maybe not, maybe if not right away, um, you know, certainly certainly we try and be timely awesome. with that. Yeah, and also if you've got questions about purchasing, there's there's a often someone on the website in the chat. They, they were very helpful to me when I was buying it myself. And then the forum the for yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, that's Forum's right. Awesome. Also, join that Facebook group because they're very helpful there too. They've helped me out a bunch of times. Yeah, I've, I've been on that Facebook one as well. And yeah, yeah. It is, it's, it's yeah. quite I'll useful. I'll put all these links in the description below. Tobin, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I'll see you next time. And do check out the software, Band in the Box. It's awesome. Okay, thank you. See you later. Thank you.